How, how are you? I just wanted to stop by for a minute and brief you up on my uh, trip to Brussels. I just returned, uh, but uh, before uh, talking about the trip, I just want to express my sincere condolences over uh, the loss of the Palestinian American uh, journalist, Al Jazeera journalist, who was killed, Shireen. Uh, it was uh, really, uh, really uh, horrifying. She's well respected. Uh, she was doing her job, the jobs that you all do every uh, single uh, day. And uh, I just want to express my condolences to her family, her friends, her colleagues, uh, in fact, all of us, for, uh, for her loss. Uh, the situation of her killing is being uh, investigated, and we call for a transparent uh, investigation of her killing. She was uh, very uh, well respected. I actually had the opportunity to meet with her when I was in uh, the West Bank uh, last November, and uh, she did an extraordinary interview, and I left uh, there feeling extraordinary respect for her. So I know that she will be uh, sadly missed uh, by all of us, and uh, we have to ensure uh, that uh, we get to the bottom of her, of her killing. Uh, and then on the trip to uh, Brussels, uh, I had the opportunity to participate in the uh, uh, Syrian um, donors uh, meeting that was called by the uh, European uh, Union, the European Commission. Uh, I was happy to uh, uh, announce uh, an additional uh, over $800 million in U.S. government uh, contributions to Syria. My purpose for going, despite the fact I'm president of the Security Council and everything that we're dealing with here in the Security Council, was really to amplify and highlight the importance of staying focused on the situation in uh, Syria uh, to make sure that we start the process of preparing uh, for uh, the extension of uh, the, um, uh, the border crossing of uh, the mandate uh, that will expire on the, on the 10th of July. While I was there, I had the opportunity to meet with the UN, to meet uh, as well with uh, humanitarian workers who are working uh, in that area. And I also had a meeting with all of the, the partners, the donors who are, um, who are there. And I think uh, we all agree that it is important that we continue to provide the needed assistance uh, to the millions of Syrians who are dependent on uh, this cross-border uh, mechanism. Uh, so we will be working very diligently on that over the course of the next few uh, weeks leading up to the, uh, uh, the extension in July. Ambassador, Ambassador, what is your message going to be to Israel? What is the United States' message to Israel regarding the situation and this no, shooting? Our, our message, and the Ambassador gave that mes message very strongly to everyone, is that this has to be investigated. Uh, it has to be investigated transparently, and we're encouraging both sides to participate in that investigation so that we can get down to the uh, to why this happened. Our highest priority is the protection of American citizens and the protection of journalists. It is so important that journalists be allowed uh, to do their jobs without fear. And so our message, again, is let's get to the bottom of this. Let's ensure this never happens again. So the Palestinians are treated differently than, say, Ukrainian refugees. There's already this perception in the Middle East that they're not valued by the West as much as other people. And is this just going to hurt that perception? I, I think that, you, as you noted, it's a perception, but it is only a perception. Uh, as far as the U.S. government is concerned, our highest priority is humanitarian assistance around the world, and we prioritize it wherever it is. $800 million to Syrian uh, 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 humanitarian is not a small amount of money. We are also the largest donor to uh, support Palestinians around the world. So. Oh, sorry, sure. Madam Ambassador, that the Syrian will get the money while Assad is still in, in power. 